Um, just again, for anyone that's just jumping on now, if we could please keep our microphones on mute and our cameras switched off because the presentation is going to be recorded, okay? So if Chris Conroy here with me this evening, Chris is going to look after recording and sound and things like that. So hopefully we'll have no sound difficulties or anything like that and it'll run pretty smooth. So in a couple of seconds, Chris is going to hit record to start off and then we start going through the presentation, okay? So just I'll give anyone else a wee second to knock off their mics if they're on and their cameras as well. Okay, good. So if you're ready to go, Chris. Okay, so um, you're all very welcome this evening, um, ladies and gentlemen, I suppose, to do to our Be Ready to Coach Spring Series webinar, okay? Uh, there's a couple of things I just want to hit on before we start going through the presentation, through the slides, to keep in mind throughout, okay? And hopefully they should ho help to answer any questions that anyone might have. If you've got a question, maybe just jot it down and at the end of the presentation, we'll have a section for, for questions and I'll let you unmute your microphone as the chat function isn't working, okay? So the first point I just want to get across is that tomorrow morning, your club contact that we send out the information about these webinars, about different things that we've been running, uh, will receive a message and on, on the message, there'll be a couple of things, okay? So there'll be a link to a forms that you, the under 11 coach, and in some cases, there might be a number of coaches from the same club, can fill out the form to gain access to a county-wide WhatsApp group that for the coming season, we'll be providing information, sessions, ideas, and loads of resources for you as the coach to help you throughout, throughout your the calendar, okay? We'll also be providing links to a SharePoint that has different games and drills, some of which I'll touch on throughout the presentation, and also to our Cavan, and Co Cavan Coaching and Games YouTube channel that some of you may be familiar with. It's a free resource. There's loads of content under and loads of specific stuff for the age group, okay? So we'll get cracking. So be ready to coach under 11. So as everyone's probably aware, the guidelines are that at the end of this month, all going well, we'll be back out on the field coaching with our underage teams, okay? So look, probably the first couple of weeks, it's it's going to be smaller groups, pods, 15s that you'll be working with. And we'd imagine it's it'll probably be it'll be at least four weeks of training before there's any games or mixing with other clubs, naturally enough, in the situation that we're in at the minute. So just the topics for this evening that we're going to cover um, would be fundamentals, drills and activities, games based approach. And then, as I said, resources that I've touched on a wee bit there already for planning your session. So I'm going to take the presentation now from the point of view as I'm over the under 11 team in my club this year, what approach I would take on the return to training and on what I'd be look, looking to focus on with my players. Okay, so try and keep that in mind throughout that I'm talking from the, your point of view that you're the coach over the team and this is what we're looking to cover throughout, throughout the, the return to training and the, the weeks following that. Okay. So the first thing up for tonight, first thing on the agenda are fundamentals. So developing fundamental movement skills, okay? So there's different types of fundamental movement skills. There's ABCs, which are agility, balance, coordination. We've got running, jumping, throwing, and our catching, passing, kicking, and striking, okay? So as you see, all the different component, components involved in young players developing their skills, their motor skills, and then their, their football skills, Gaelic football skills, to develop as they get older, okay? So these are extremely important to build on with your players as they've been players have been missing from game situations, training situations, even the schoolyard setting over the past year. Naturally, these movements aren't being, aren't practiced as much, okay? So there's lots of practice we do in terms of our training, but there's also the out in the schoolyard, they're playing around with their friends, they're down at the field, they're playing with their friends. They're not getting as much physical activity. So these movement patterns probably have been lost slightly in the last year, but this is where you're going to come in to help them build those back up again, okay? So FMS stands for uh, Fundamental Movement Skills. I'll let you take a wee read through that, that slide there that I have up. It might look a wee bit heavy, but if you take a wee read through it, it's just the functions of how fundamental movement skills work and what they are to, to a child or to the human, to human body, okay? So by developing these movements, Kids will have a better chance of succeeding in games or training situations or isolated moments, okay? So if a player has poor balance, poor agility, they might be weaker at some of those different things. 
it's going to be a lot harder for them when you throw in the extra thing of the football and maybe other players tackling them for them to perform the skill that they're looking to perform. So that's why it's really important to keep a focus on these skills. Okay. It, for example, I'll give you an example that a player's balance might not be as good. So they're balancing on one foot, they're trying to kick the football, they may not succeed at doing it. So then they'll start to feel they're not developing at the same rate as the other kids maybe that can do it. They might hit their confidence, they might be shy, then they might start thinking, well, I'm not really good or I don't want to go back next week. That's why it's really important to try and work on these skills, okay? So these skills can be worked into, so for example, sevens, nines, the whole way up, you're working on stations, they're getting loads of chance to do them. I'm still recommending that you work on them at this age group, but possibly you might add them in as part of your warm up to start of your session. They don't take as large chunk of your session, but they should still take some focus, okay? So you can add them in with specific skills. You're always including the football. To make them a wee bit harder, you can up the tempo of them, make them a wee bit faster, easier, obviously we're gonna slow them down. And we're challenging players, different, different things they're working on. So the first top left one here, they may have a football in their hand, they're working through the ladder, they're accelerating, they're slowing down again, they're turning off their left foot, turning off their right foot, left foot, and then they're working back to the start. Maybe slow, maybe fast, you're adding in your solo, your hop, we hurdles, you're adding in your jumps, okay? Same again, running up, solo at the cone, cross the obstacles in front, up, underneath, throw it up, catch it. You're working on the added thing of having the football involved while they're also, their mind is also concentrating on the different obstacles that are playing in front okay so that's just a couple of examples again top left here obviously we're working on kicking you and the points are coming up from the distance that you're kicking so obviously you're working on the short kick the long kick the medium distance kick okay and you're moving along as it works probably another wee point that the lads hit on today here just when we were chatting about it was the first couple of sessions will possibly be social distance or trying to keep as much social distance as possible. So working on these stations, working on their different skills is a good way to keep kids spaced out and away from each other and maybe in even smaller groups that you know who's with who and what you're focusing on, okay? So we're gonna stay on through the fundamental movements, but it's basically we're gonna look now at how to break down the skill and how to how you're going to fix it okay so we're going to take a wee look at the idea method and we're going to take a wee look at the step method okay we'll go through them now in a wee bit more detail so the idea method introduce demonstrate explain slash execute and attend so for introducing the skill it's the what the skill is when we do it and why we do it the demonstration is a number of demonstrations, different angles that all the kids aren't going to be standing straight in front of you. You have to change where you are, where the demonstrator is, that everyone gets a good look at it, see how it's supposed to be performed and keep the coaching points to the main one. So the one to three, after that, you're probably going to start losing kids a wee bit. Okay, so keep them short and sharp and the kids will engage in them. Explain and execute. So you're going to explain then what you're asking the players to do, what the task is. You might throw out a few questions to, to the kids to see if they understand what you're talking about. They might have a few questions for you that you can answer for them and then let them at it. Let them have a go, let them try what it is. They might succeed at it, they might not succeed at it, but that's what it's all about. It's trying it, trying it, trying it, and make sure then to attend, okay? This is the most important bit. You're assessing while they're practicing it, doing the, uh, the wee game or the drill or whatever it is you're asking them to do. You're assessing what you're looking for, if it's the solo, if it's the bounce, the skill, you reiterate the coaching points, what, what's important, what you're trying to get across, then you're fixing mistakes, okay? So if you see a child making a mistake on the skill, so it might be dropping the ball from their left hand to their left foot, doing, to the right foot and they're doing a solo, you have to fix that mistake. Otherwise, they're not going to know that it's not the correct thing to do. They might keep doing it, keep doing it. So that's why it's important for you to spot, fix, and then encourage good technique after that, okay? Like everything else, when they know they've done something right and correct, they're going to feel happy about themselves. They're going to go home happy. So as a result of that, they're going to perform good technique then the next time. Okay. So that's our idea method. We just, lots of us have probably seen that before in our foundations and level ones. Just want to knock over it again. And our step method. Okay. So 
the idea method was probably challenging one player in terms of spotting and fixing. The step method were challenging all the players through different constraints that we're going to put on the games or drills or the situations that we have in front of us, okay? So S stands for space. So we make the area bigger, give the kids more space. Smaller, give them less space. They're working in tighter area. If it's the stations, for example, we make them longer, so they're working for a longer distance or shorter. Might be a wee bit sharper in and out, okay? T stands for time and task. So you might change up the time to have on the ball. The number of scores, so the length, you have 10 seconds to get a score and the next team gets the ball. Number of touches, you might give them a couple of touches. It might be no touch to keep the ball moving fast. The number of passes they may have to get to get a score or to that might be the score. Okay, so number of passes could be, we could be working on our hand pass, we could be working on our kick pass. That's how we change the constraint of the game to focus in on the skill that we're focusing on at that time or that training session. And then possibly change into work on their weaker side once they're starting to perform the skills a wee bit better. And this is the age to start targeting that at. The equipment, so equipment is a really good one. It helps to challenge the movement patterns like we've seen at the start in the in the stations game. So tennis balls, reaction balls, ladders, hurdles, tackle bags. There's loads of different things, cones, anything at all that you can change the Wii game or drill to focus on the movement that you're looking for. And then it's an added thing. If they've got the ball and they're also working to some of the equipment, it's an added thing in their head to help them develop on their movement skills, their fundamental movement skills to challenge those things as well. Because in a game, it's going to result in an, an opposition player might be that, um, might be the obstacle, whereas adding in other obstacles will help develop that movement, okay? And then players. So changing the number of players you have on each team will obviously directly result in which team has it a wee bit easier and which team may have it a wee bit more difficult. So adding in an extra defender or attacker or changing it that one team has 4v2 or 5v1 that their chance of success is a lot higher and it also makes the defender or the team with less work a wee bit harder and maybe communicate with each other to get the ball okay so fundamental movements these can be worked on and with our with our skill cards that i'm going to show you now so for example, these resources, as I talked about at the start, will all be sent out tomorrow um, to you guys and anything like this that I go through, you'll, you'll receive, okay? So a skill card, we've probably all seen these before. So for example, on the front of the skill card, we've got our teaching points of what we're looking to do for our high catch. Up in the top corner, you've got the idea. So introduce, demonstrate, um, execute and attend. And then on the back, we've got a number of drills and games that are focusing on that specific skill and how to develop it. Then we've also got our step down in the bottom corner, which is the variations of how to make it a wee bit harder, but then also to regress it if it's a wee bit more, more difficult for the players, okay? There's no harm in doing that, regressing the drill to make sure the kids are getting the skill performed with the right technique before moving on, okay? So there's two examples of the skill cards front and back. It shows two different things. Having these printed out possibly show the kids at sessions as well will help them understand that a wee bit more to a visual aid so that's the same um skill cards used to coach the skill and pick appropriate activities the step method will help help to make it easier or harder so drills we're going to move on now to drills and activities so as it says on the slide these should be kept varied from session to session to help focus on a particular skill that you're trying to develop with your players so Focusing on these in blocks will help session, help you as the coach to plan out the session. It will also give the kids a chance to focus on working on that skill. For example, if it's block one and we're working on kicking and catching, if we're working for a two-week block, it's potentially six training sessions. The child is getting the chance to perform the skill over a longer period of time, and it's giving you, the coach, the chance to spot and fix, to see are they taking in the coaching points, are they developing on it, opposed to if you're jumping from one thing to next session and then back to a bit of it it doesn't give the child the chance to actually practice the technique or you the coach to make sure that they keep performing it at at the right at the right movement okay so i just broke them up there you can break them up in different ways so kicking and catching shooting and blocking and tackling and hand passing together okay 
So different types of drills and games. Again, we will receive all of these things tomorrow. Um, so we've got our target games that we're focusing on hitting the target or knocking the target. We've got our court games. So these are all gonna different types of games to add different constraints when you're working on different skills, okay? We've got our field games, which can be rounders, a full match, your 2v2s, or your 5v3s, 3v2s, okay? You've then got your non-evasion games, so it's giving the player full chance to succeed at the skill with no pressure coming on them from another player, okay? You've got your part evasion games, so for example, they could be your 5v3s, that's giving the team that has the ball a larger chance of at success of getting their score or getting the outcome that you're looking for in your session without being full full faced on with an opponent or an obstacle. And then we've got our full evasion games, which can be full games, full rules, full contact. It can be you adding different constraints to your games, like we said with our step method. It could be wide man that the ball has to be passed out to a certain area and come back into play before we can score. It can be opposite corners where we've got players based in different areas and we have to work the ball through the middle zone and work it to that player and then they join the play and the player that passes to them takes their place in the corner, okay? So then the games-based approach, I suppose the, the drills and activities and the games-based approach is what I'm really trying to to get the message across that we're looking to focus on. As I said, if I'm taking the under-11 team, that's what I'm looking to focus on on the return to play, along with our fundamentals at the start of our sessions, okay? So games, 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 games. Kids are going to be mad to get back out playing, so we need to let them play, okay? But by letting them play is also the chance for us as the coach to get in and do the spot and fix and coach through our games and hopefully develop them then through that way, okay? So you can work on the different skills through your game situations by changing the constraints of the game. So for example, if we're looking to improve our kick passing, we have to get four kick passes before we can score, could be a rule that we add in, or it might be that for every kick pass that goes straight to hand or one bounce and into the player's hands, we get an extra point for our team, okay? So you get to see what I mean by we're adding, changing the rules of the game to help work on the skills that you're trying to focus on, okay? Again, possibly to get when you're playing the game, it may not be working or it may not be getting to the outcome that you're looking to achieve if it's that you're working on catching. So it's up to you as the coach to think on the spot or have planned out before that that this is what's going to happen and we change it and hopefully the players can pick up on it. And again, don't be afraid to get into the game, stop it, praise good technique, do your spotting and fixing, and let them play again, okay? Because they're only going to learn by doing these over and over in repetition in their games, okay? And if we stop the game, um, be concise in what you're going to talk about. Don't have it that the kids are then standing for 10 minutes and you're lecturing them on the field. They may be getting cold. Some of them will lose interest. They're there to play. So have your coaching points concise, ready to go. Get them out there and then let them back at it. Let them play and let them fix it, okay? So I'm going to just jump on over to the resources. Okay, so like I said at the start, the, there's loads of different resources that you guys will be receiving, okay? And I'd encourage everyone, and it, the WhatsApp group won't be limited to just one coach from your under-11 team in your club. If two or three want to get into it, that's more than more than good enough, Okay. So you'll be receiving tomorrow the link, the form to get into the WhatsApp group. You'll be, I'm going to click on the Calvin Coaching Games YouTube channel. Here, hopefully it'll come up. It should just be loading up now on the screen. Okay, so Chris will give me the thumbs up when it's on the screen.
Okay, guys, so it, it, the, the link isn't just letting it come up on it, okay? So if you go onto YouTube and type in, type in Cav and Coaching and Games, you'll find our YouTube channel. We've got playlists specific for the under 11s age group with loads of content there for them. And we'll be sending out loads more as, as we develop them over a couple of months, okay? So everything on that page has been developed by us here at Cav and Coaching and Games and hope it will be a huge benefit to you guys, hopefully over the coming months. To, to develop, okay? So it should be up on the screen there now. Um, and if we go into playlists, you should see then the work. So we've got games, we've got all our different webinars, we've got different scoring drills, and we've got our under 11 playlist here, which has different challenges, reaction games, webinars that might be useful to look back on and different types of games that we can work on with the kids when we get back out on the field. So that's a really, really, really good resource to use, okay? Then we've also got our GEA activity planner, which we've went across before in our player pathway webinars. So it should be up on screen now. Um, this is a really useful resource. You can take things off it to add to sessions that you can have your session planned out beforehand, printed off if you need to pass around to the other coaches. You can change the thing, change along the side to the age group that suits your team and to possibly what you're looking to work on. So if it's gaining possession, if it's the body catch, you just hit that and then games should come up that are targeted for that. And if you see the Wii, color along the side of the, some is orange, some is yellow, some is red. That is the difficulty of the game, okay? So they're really good, and that's on learninggea.ie. If you type in that or GA Activity Planner, it will come up for you and you'll find it. Again, that will be included in a resource and in our message that's sent out to you guys tomorrow. So all these messages will go to your club contact. In some cases, you may, you may be the club contact that's on the call here with us now. You may... Some clubs you may not know who the club contact is. If you're unsure of anything like that, my email, I'll pop it up here on the bottom in a wee second. You'll see that and it, it'll be, you can give me a shout or send me an email and I can hopefully can answer any questions then that you've got, okay? So, I'll just share my screen again just so everyone can see. My email address is there now at the bottom, dan.wharton.gpo.cav at ga.ie. Any information that you're unsure of, pop me an email, hopefully I can answer it. The presentation has been recorded, so it'll also be sent out tomorrow if there's anything that you want to look back on, or if you want to send it on to the other coaches that are involved with you this year, maybe they can pick up a few tips or that from it, okay? So I suppose all that's left to do is to say thanks very much for taking the time out of your evening to to join join myself this evening if anyone has any questions now um they can if you want to raise your hand or if you want to unmute the mic and um, to allow you to ask it uh, hopefully i'll be able to answer that for you okay thanks very much guys right, before i much jumped in just encourage you to ask questions again there's no no such thing as a stupid question so encourage us don't be afraid of it and we'll answer as best we can Gary, what do you want to go ahead? Yeah, no, just wondering. I understand we'd be probably four weeks training before there's any level of games, but what what is the plan for the under 11s go games, or you know, what are you thinking at this stage? Hi, Gary, Dan here. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Um. Yeah, Gary. Look. Um. I suppose we've made recommendations to to you board. For the coming for the coming season, and I suppose it's been it's it's with them now to decide, and they're probably waiting to see what what the outcome is or what when the the go ahead for games is. But the youth board will will ultimately decide, I suppose, what format the games are going to take for this this coming season. So we've made recommendations to them, and look, hopefully, information will be provided now to you guys. I'd hope before or around the time we get back, but get back out training. Yeah, that's, that's it. Right. Okay. 
Yeah, is there someone else there for to ask questions? Yeah, Dan, uh, yeah, it's Gabriel Brennan here, uh, Mullahorn, Dan. Uh, or Jack, sorry. Uh, when, when you say you've made recommendations, is, is that recommendations that it'll be uh, like a, a competition based? Um, uh, or is it uh, Go Games? Um, yeah, it's, it's we'd be would be at under 11s. The idea or would be that it's 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 go games for the coming season, but it's up to I suppose to the to the youth board to decide on that. But it, it will follow the path of the last couple of years that it is the go games um, style that 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 goes ahead with with that age group, and then from there up, 13s, 15s, 17s would be the more structured competition as in the, the divisions and league championship kind of format. But the idea would be that it'll be go games format for, for the coming season. Okay. Thanks, Gabriel. Anyone else there, folks, that would like to, as Anton, that they want to ask, I suppose there's... Any question that's asked, there's probably at least two or three others on that are thinking the same thing. So, Anton at all, did you want to ask, please shout. If there, if you don't have Anton, maybe you're not comfortable asking on the call, just shoot me an email and I can I can hopefully get back to you. Uh, Darren McCarthy, you the hand raised up. Yeah, like, just wondering um, with the under 11s, what, what would the time frame be for a session? Like, you know, so say for your senior team, it's probably an hour and a quarter, but for, for under 11s, what would you recommend? And then, second part of that question would be how many times a week would you recommend that they should be, you know, as a club, maybe getting them out training? Yeah, Darius, very good question. I suppose it's probably lots of things in the same thing. Um, Look, keeping the attention of of young lads and that for a session, anything over an hour, you're possibly going to start losing them. So an hour for your training session, and it's then having your session that it's well planned out in advance, that they're not standing around maybe waiting for things to be set out throughout the session, that everything's ready to go. And within that hour, you're getting your 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 focus on the different areas that you're planning towards. Okay, So it might be your warm-up and your fundamentals at the start and incorporating them into it then your drills to work on the specifics skill that you're going to work on so if it's your kicking or your catching or whatever it is and then your game situations to work on those and change the constraints to work on those within it i suppose in terms of number of training sessions uh, the idea that it'll probably be four weeks anyway of training before we go back i i would be thinking probably three training sessions a week i know light may possibly be it would light probably should be good for us now so three training sessions a week keep the kids active they're going to be mad to get out playing playing football if it's two a week possibly but I, I, at least two a week would be would be optimal for the players but if there could be a third training session a week as well they'll be mad to go i hope that's that's okay thank you cheers thanks dara hey kieran priority of you hand raised yeah chris uh Jack, uh, just um, training medium and weak and strong players, what advice would you have? Because uh, we would, in Christian Law, we would have a lot of, say, in between and weak players. So, what advices would you be able to give on that? Hi, Kieran. Um, yeah, we kind of we touched on a similar topic in space, uh, under, under 11, under, sorry, 7 and 9 one. There's probably not a correct answer or one straightforward answer to it but it's trying to challenge all the players so it's trying to challenge the weaker players and also at the same time you're trying to challenge the stronger player at, throughout it so there's different ways I suppose that it can be done through different parts of your training sessions you're working on the the skills of the game it may be challenging the stronger player then to use their weaker side develop that a wee bit more and it's then also encouraging the weaker player that when they've done something with the performed good technique, it's encouraging them and bringing them on. There's always, I suppose, the debate of splitting them up, stronger one side, weaker the other side. 
a times your session that's perfectly okay to do and then but i would say not to do it all the time because the kids will realize if they're being left on one side that is maybe the weaker game that's been played they'll realize oh well that's all the stronger players up there how come i'm never getting up there so it's just as the coach picking the good times to do that and then possibly if that player is strong enough i know you're you're you you have big numbers there kieran so it it may yeah. challenge them with with against the older players, if in if possible. I know that's probably a lot more so if in smaller smaller numbers that's possible to do to put the under eleven to the thirteens. Um, Chris, just as a point, he's going to just add in on that. Yeah, so Kieran, probably another way to do it as well is uh, when you're doing maybe your small cell games, so your three on threes, your two on twos, or one on ones. Try get them lads nearly paired up that they're mm. competing against each other. Whereas maybe not as noticeable then for the weaker kids, as we call them. Again, look, we, I don't want to call them weaker kids, but yeah. look, there are different stages in their development. So if you compare the weaker ones and the 1v1s one, one, and 2v2s. But then again, don't be afraid to pair the weaker lads against the stronger lads because that will get them thinking in terms of, oh, I maybe need to improve this, or I need to improve my tactics, or I need to improve my call attention. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Kieran. Any more questions, guys? Okay, folks. Sorry. Go ahead, uh, Andy. Andy, oh, lads. Question? Yeah, that's easy to hear me. Yeah. Yeah, no, just lads, probably touching on there from Kieran's point there. Um, just I suppose like like a ten year old probably in likes of Lavi or Cornafane, you know, and compared to my uncle, might be capable of doing the same kind of stuff. Is there something that you would say there, lads, like a template as in a hand over there, I would say if an under nine coach or you know, sometimes it's hard to kind of gauge what you have, I suppose, a few weeks into a session and you're kinda of going like, Jesus, what 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 am I doing here? Sort of thing, like is there would you just kind of say that in a bit, maybe a template there from your under nine coach as a kind of a handover, would say, or probably what you have in front of you, sort of thing, you know, like as in what to do? Would, would you just have that in there handy, or what would you think about that? Or? Yeah, Andy, I can I'll take that one. Um, yeah, as, as into what is specific for that age group and what they should be covering, okay? So, in our resources that, that we'll be providing out to you all tomorrow, there will be examples of what is specific or what is the target to cover at that age group so over the last the last number of weeks clubs have have filled out um our club contacts were sent out a form of a SWOT analysis and a good number of clubs now at this stage have come come back filled it out and have received a coach their coaching plan for the year which will include the specifics for the under the north street to the under sevens working up to the under nines what the under nines should be covering and then uh, the under 11s what they will cover then okay so it's building on on top layers each year that the coaches have covered that develop hopefully develop that with the kids and then they're at that stage to move on to the next level after that okay so i suppose there, there any there are some clubs that are in the process this week of filling it out and we would encourage all to have that filled out and receive their coaching plan for the year as uh, all the information is provided in it also yeah that's excellent cheers lads and obviously then at the end of the year then you'll be handing that over to the under 13 coach or ever as well too and yeah the, that the under 13 coach then next year will build build blocks on top of that hopefully what what you guys the under 11 coaches will have covered this year that that everyone is i suppose working along the same direction the same path yeah that's excellent cheers lads thank you thanks andy good to have you back lad Okay, folks. So I suppose um, I don't see anyone else that just that that's going to pop up with a question. Um, again, if anyone has any questions that they would like to maybe ask me that they don't want to ask on the presentation, my email is there. Pop me an email. Again, you'll receive a message from your club contact tomorrow with all the details, the resources, this presentation, and the or the form to get into the WhatsApp group. And Best luck when we're getting back out on the field coaching and thanks very much for taking the time out this, even, this evening, okay? Thank you. Cheers, lads. Thanks, lads. Thank thanks, you, lads. lads. Thanks, lads. Thanks, lads. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks.
Thanks. Thanks. So, Thanks, folks. Thanks, Cheers, lads. Cheers.